My guest today is my good friend, Mike Olson. He died during a lung transplant and met his donor in heaven. Mike, is, it's uh, great to have you with us today. Thanks, Randy. I'm really glad to be here. Mike, uh, you and I have become good friends through this process. We both have had lung issues and have exchanged stories about our uh, ailment, what caused us to uh, succumb. But uh, tell us what happened. I mean, my goodness, you had this uh, event where, where you eventually met your donor in heaven. Yeah, so... Um... I had a terminal lung disease called idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, and I developed that in 2014. And uh, it was actually a death sentence because there was no cure for this disease, and it would eventually uh, take my lungs away. It, my lungs would deteriorate to the point where I couldn't breathe. So I was put on oxygen 24-7, and, um, you know, that was my life, uh, and I was you know, really concerned about, you know, what I should do <laughs> with that situation or that inf information that was given to me that I had a terminal lung disease. And uh, I, I kind of made a decision right away. You know, I could be bitter about it or I could be better and uh, make a difference in the world in which I live. So I decided to uh, just be proactive and uh, to hear from the Lord first what his... Um, take on the whole situation was, you know, doctors can tell us things uh, about our bodies and, and our health, but it's ultimately God who is in control. And so uh, I have a chapel in my backyard and uh, I went there and I said, Lord, okay, this is the information that's been given to me. Uh, what do I do here? Um, I stood in the pulpit um, as a preacher and preached on signs, wonders, and miracles, preached on healing. And yet uh, I I had this lung disease, terminal lung disease, and I was on oxygen. So when I went into my chapel, uh, I just sat there and then I said, Lord, what, what, what do I do? What, what do you want me to do? You know, how do I deal with this situation that I've been given? And I just heard his voice so clear. And when we hear his voice, he gives us peace. And he said, uh, just trust me. That's all he said. Just trust me. And I was scheduled at that time to go to surgery for an open lung biopsy to really to see if, yes, in fact, the doctor made the right diagnosis and uh, the results came back and, and yes, I was uh, terminally ill. And uh, so at that point, I just started uh, trying to be an advocate for other patients and also um, just get out in my community with other people who are dying of the disease and and try to help them as a pastor realize, you know, we can live in faith and not fear and that we could, uh, you know, make a difference no matter what we're, we're given in life. We can make a difference uh, with our lives on how we respond because people are always watching our lives and uh, seeing how we respond uh, to the things, that, the adversities that come in our way. So, yes. So you eventually uh, had to obviously wait for that lung donor, and yeah. uh, then you got the call. Uh, yeah, I waited. I waited five years on a transplant. Five years, list. and that's a long time. Wow! You know, we always think, you know, and I've always preached, you know, that God answers our prayers, and He does, but it's kind of sometimes not in our own timing, right, or what we wish. And so I waited five years, and but all during that time of waiting. Um, on a transplant list for an, an organ donor. Um, that whole time I was in perfect peace and supernaturally the Lord gave me such strength to go out and, and, and you know, be a public speaker for lung disease and to meet with politicians and celebrities to make a difference uh, about this disease. And so, yeah, I waited five years on oxygen, um, very difficult way of life to live. And, Yet I knew that the Lord said, just trust me. And I had a peace that passes all understanding in my situation that knowing that he was going to come through one way or another. And I always told uh, my wife, you know, I had three options before me. Um, I could get a supernatural healing and God does that and still does that today. Or I would uh, die from the disease or I would get a lung transplant. And so I went to prayer because I had thousands of people praying for me. 
and believe in God for my situation. And yet it goes back to that still small voice. When you hear God's voice, it'll keep you in peace. And so I asked the Lord, uh, you know, what do I believe for? What, 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 what is the plan here for, for this situation? And I heard clear as a bell, you're going to get a transplant. You know, that goes against, to me, everything I preached from the pulpit. You know, God can just supernaturally heal you, and he can. But for me, he chose to uh, get a lung transplant. And I think his ways are higher than our ways, his thoughts than our thoughts. So I said, okay, Lord, I, I will agree that, uh, that there's a pair of lungs out there that will fit my body and that will eradicate the, the uh, disease that was destroying my, my, my lungs. So... So yeah, five years, and then uh, I got I got the call. So, uh, and what happened was, we were waiting on that phone call, and um, so I was actually out in my uh, art cabin where I was uh, doing some folk art, and I heard the Lord again, His voice clearly saying, "Hey, put up all these art supplies. Uh, you're not going to have time for this." I thought that was it's kind of weird, you know, like, why is he telling me something like normal uh, things that we do in our daily life, whether we're working or playing or doing whatever. And he said, put all that stuff up. So I said, OK, Lord. So I boxed it all up and I thought that was really strange. And <laughs> I walked back to the house and the phone rings and my wife says, it's the transplant center. Uh, the doctor wants to talk to you. And so sure enough, he got on the phone and said, you know, we have a match we found a set of lungs and, and you need to come in right away. So uh, off to the hospital, we went packed. you know, had a little to go bag packed for five years. I had a to go bag packed. So uh, always being ready for whatever, uh, you know, whenever I'd get that call. So we, we went off to the hospital and they had to prep me and the donor lungs, you know, the, the person who died, uh, was actually being kept alive actually for, uh, until the transplant took place. And, uh, you know, so there was like a lot of time in between waiting. And so they prepped me and then I, I was in the, in the hospital and that next morning is when the transplant took place. So. Mm. So this was a, obviously a tragedy that ended this young man's life. And yes. you, you are now, on the operating room table and right. uh, your lungs are removed. And during the procedure, something happened uh, that just absolutely is, is incredible. And that's what, well, that would be an understatement as to uh, what happened. So take us yes. uh, like, to that place. Okay. So I, I remember them I become, I was going into this elevator and going down into the OR, uh, department and you know i hadn't gotten any medications yet and so they wheeled me in and then put the mask on for the uh, anesthesia and and that's the last thing i knew in the natural <laughs> but as i was on the table and they were operating um it's a long surgery it's a 12-hour surgery so you know it was a, a long process and uh so as they were operating and as they were you know what happens was they hook you up to a heart and lung machine and the machine breathes for you because your lungs are being removed and so at that point they had gotten the new lungs in and they thought everything was you know going according to plan but uh, obviously there was a problem and uh, i was on the table and all of a sudden i i felt myself lifting off out of, off the table, out of my body. And I, I thought, wow, this is weird. And you can see the doctors working on you. And, and, uh, so anyway, I started coming off the table, you know, levitating off, you know, going up off the op operating table. And all of a sudden I, uh, I see these swirling lights swirling all around me, like rainbow color, you know, just, myriads of these lights you know swirling and all of a sudden i looked and and i hear uh these voices beautiful uh singing voice in there and they started to say 
Mike's coming home. And I was like, wow. You know, and I'm such a jokester in, the, in, in, my, in my life with people. So to myself, I thought, well, at least I'm going up. You know? <laughs> I just, I thought to myself, I had myself sense of humor still. And I was like, at least I'm going up. But uh, right before that happened, though, I hear these, vo- these negative voices, you know, as I was lifting off the table. And they, they were saying, who do you think you are? you know, you're not going up. You're, what do you, who do you think you are? And, and just taunting me. And I realized, Oh, <laughs> I know what that voice is. And that's the voice of the enemy. And so I stopped it right away. I said, in the name of Jesus, shut up. You can't talk mm. to me that way. I'm a child of the living God. And when I took authority over that, it, it those voices silenced. No, there was no more voices speaking mm. at that point. And then the angels were singing and, Mike's coming home. And then there was like an interruption in that beautiful scene where the, uh, where I heard the Lord say, no, he's just here for a visit. And all of a sudden I was like, whoosh up into heaven. Now there was like bright white light as far as the eye can see. And I was like, Oh my goodness. I mean, like I am dead. I mean, I am, this is, this was unexpected. I, I went in for a lung transplant, double lung transplant, and here I am in, in heaven. And I, the first thought that came to my mind when I was there, well, you know, it was like a life review. And I also, I couldn't think of anything I did bad. Because that's what one thing I was worried about. You know, even as a Christian, even as a pastor, right? I was like, you know, we screw up. We're humans. We, you know, we, we don't have, it all together all the time and so I, I i'm sitting there i'm sitting there standing there in heaven and i i get this like epiphany that comes over me like it's like, it's like I, I didn't know this right so i get this epiphany it's all jesus and i actually could feel every molecule every substance that was in heaven it was like pulsating jesus and it was like oh my goodness i couldn't remember any of my sins like a blackboard had erased everything i've ever done wrong and i realized I'm, i was in a total bliss total peace it's just standing there and it was like i was bathed in light from the top of my head to the soles of my feet and i looked at myself and i was just full of light and i was like standing there going wow and then all of a sudden i i thought wait a second someone died so that i can receive these new lungs i said I just thought about my donor and I thought, wow, he, he really, well, I was just thinking they died so I can live. I'm so grateful. So I I just kind of, I thought I shouted it out, but in heaven, it's not like you talk. It's almost like your whole spirit being talks. And I just said, I want to thank my donor. As soon as I said that, it was like, I, I, I felt a presence behind me. And I looked behind me and there was Jesus Mm. and the donor standing there. And I looked and the donor, it was really interesting because I was trying to take it all in. And the, and the donor was like, he had his head down, not, not in shame, but what what I perceived is he was like, don't, this isn't about me, please. Uh, You know, I, I designed my organ donor card because I wanted someone else to live, Mm. you know, to, to use my organs to, to be able to continue life. And so the focus was really Jesus. And so all of a sudden I, I felt Jesus put his hand on my left shoulder and he said, Mike, these are your new lungs. Receive them. And I said, yes, Lord. And as soon as I agreed with heaven, as soon as I agreed with the word of the Lord to me, I, it was like, whoosh. I was back into my body and I was back in the OR. Mm. And it was interesting about this was that um, my uh, wife was home during the surgery. And what happened was that how, how I died was the doctor took the clamp off too early and I bled out. And mm. so that's what caused the death. When I read my doctor report months later, I, it was right there. Patient died, needed to be resuscitated. And so uh, I read it right there from the doctor's notes, you know, he bled out profusely. 
And so that's why I died on the table. But, you know, it's interesting because my wife was home at the same time because they were going to call her midway. And then after the surgery was over and uh, anyway, she was home and I had a bunch of oxygen tanks that I used, uh, you know, daily. And we had them stored on the, on the front porch. And um, all of a sudden, one of the oxygen tanks falls down. Boing! And my wife wakes up. She calls the transplant center. Mike, oh, he's, he's in surgery for transplant. So she, at that time, she had called and, and they said, one lung in. You know, so I was even telling her step by step everything I was going through. Wow. So anyway, um, she found out. She went to the hospital after that. And the transplant uh, was successful in the way I did get a set of new lungs. And um, she asked the doctor, so what are all these machines he's hooked up to? What is going on? And they said he died. Mike died. We had to bring him back. It was, mm -hmm. you know, pretty violent. <laughs> and uh, try to get him to come back to life and he's hooked up to heart and lung machine and he's in a coma right now so mm -hmm. i was in a coma for 10 days interesting though god knows every detail right so while i was in the coma the day i died on the table i had a friend lived across town and he got woken up with an audible voice in his bedroom because he had been praying for me and the voice said mike's with me well, he was devastated. He was like, what do you mean, Lord, Mike's with you? Well, he, didn't know, he didn't know what to say. And he didn't want to call my wife and, and say, you know, your husband died. So he kept it to himself. And then a few days later, um, when I was hooked up to the heart and lung machine, because um, all my saturation levels were down, everything, everything, I was not breathing on my own. The machine was doing it for me. And so... He gets woken up again, uh, my friend Jonathan, and uh, this time the voice, audible voice of God in his bedroom said, he's back and he's going to be okay. Mm. So then he, he calls my wife on the phone and says, you know, this is what happened. I, I don't understand it. I don't know why I get messages from God for my, for Mike, but this is what happened. So interesting. I'm in a coma. I can't tell my wife, hey, I went to heaven. You know, I, I, I met my donor. So she's sitting there at home and I'm in a coma and she's sitting on the couch talking to her sister because they were doing some cleaning and preparation for me to come home. And all of a sudden my wife just sits there and goes, Oh my goodness. And her sister Kay says, what? She goes, I just, something came over me. Mike went to heaven and got to thank his donor. Uh -huh. She says, I don't even know how I know that. And so her sister said, so she just we knew to... that she, the Lord had told her that yes. you were going to meet your donor yes. in heaven. And wow. so she's like, I can't wait till he gets out of this coma so I can ask him if that happened. So wow. I, have a, I have a friend, Jeff, who's a doubting Thomas. And he goes, Patty, when you go to the hospital, I want to go with you. So they come into the ICU and it was 10 days later. Uh, they had a, a trouble. Uh, Entubate, you know, extubating the tube out of my throat uh, because it was in there so long. So that day they were going to take the tube out finally, and I was going to breathe on my own. And so Jeff comes bounding into the ICU. He goes, I'm going to go in there first, Patty. So he goes in and he goes, I'm like coming out of this. The tube just got out of my throat. I, I, I'm talking like three octaves lower, like a, and, you know, so Jeff goes, Mike, when you were out there in the Netherlands, like, did you experience anything? And in my groggy voice and my, you know, trying to talk for the first time, I said, yeah, uh, I, I died and went to heaven. I got to thank my donor. Well, his eyes got big as, you know, really big and turns to Patty and Patty's like, why I knew that. And they start dancing around the ICU because the Lord had already told her. So and he, he had heard it. also from yes. from the lord that that so, you had gone to heaven and met your donor so mike i've got to ask you this question because you sure. met the, the angels in heaven against a rainbow backdrop and then something right. uh, happened to you when you 
were discharged from the hospital after being in a coma were you saw an angel again. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I was wondering, you know, when I saw those swirling rainbow lights, angels swirling all around me when I was coming off the operating table uh, when I died, um, I kind of, when I got home, I kind of looked it up and I thought, you know, I always try to confirm things with the word. And in Revelations, it says, and I saw an angel with a rainbow over its head. And I realized they do exist. Uh, but anyway, I had come home in the hospital and I was in my bedroom. And it was it was kind of a lot to take in to get used to a lot, take out a lot of medicines, anti-rejection medicines and and just being home alone because my wife had to go back to work. And so I'm I'm in my bedroom laying in the bed and uh, all of a sudden I was thinking about heaven. You know, anytime I talk about this experience, it, it kind of uh, manifests all over the, the feel, same feelings I had when I was in heaven, when I talk about this experience comes. So I was in my bedroom and I, all of a sudden I, I, this angel appears like from the you know, floor to the ceiling. It was a huge angel and just staring at me. And I looked and then it disappeared. And I said, Lord, what was that? And he said, those angels are still watching after you, Mike. Uh, and I just realized, wow, you know, it's not only that I saw them in heaven. He brings one into my bedroom when, my, when I'm recuperating from double lung transplant. And I thought, this is an awesome God who <laughs> manifests himself in signs, wonders, and miracles in, in everyone's lives. And we need to be expecting more like that. We read it in the New Testament. You know, angels appeared all the time and, and spoke to uh, people and, and, and escorted them places and so it should be our natural, supernatural experience as Christians. So, I love that, Mike. And I love the fact that when you were in heaven, and this is something I can empathize with, uh, that, that your attention was on Jesus. And yeah. it, it, everyone around was, was telling you or encouraging you to stay focused on that. But you didn't have to be told, did you? Because you were in no. the presence of, yes. uh, of Jesus. And then he sends you an angel to confirm again. And that during this entire time, uh, that, that the Lord was expressing to you the need to trust him. Yes. Uh, which is and, not and to send it natural. And just, yeah. And to send an angel like that, you know, why? Because he loves us. He, he wants to know, he wants all of us to know, I have myriads of angels that are you know, continually uh, available. You know, it says that uh, angels are sent to minister to those who are heirs of salvation. That's you and I. Yes. And, and they have, I, I tell everyone, I keep my angels busy. Seriously. I mean, <laughs> you I, do. <laughs> I've, had, I've had 60 surgeries on my bronchial tubes uh, in, in the past three years. And I just go, come on guys, we're going to, we're going for another adventure. I need your help. And I, I really rely on the heavenly messengers that God sends to guide the surgeon's hands to, to make sure I get the proper medicine that things don't go awry. And, you know, so God, God says, call upon me and I will, I'll answer you. Were you that way before uh, you had your encounter in heaven, Mike, were you this trusting that you could go through 63 surgeries uh yeah and, I kinda, and say yeah, I you know was. let's go angels you know <laughs> yeah well i kind of was a wild worshiper you know and, and and it was really interesting because my last pastorate i was an anglican priest can you imagine wearing <laughs> robes i had a collar on you know and i'm a they call me the dancing priest you know so you were a charismatic anglican i was priest. charismatic Matic Anglican Church. I'm a married priest. And yes, people would <laughs> you're an oxymoron, in. as they say. <laughs> yeah. And people would walk in and say, you know, they were expecting, you know, liturgy. And but we would re be raising our hands. We'd be worshiping the Lord. We'd be dancing before the Lord. And, uh, you know, I just always had that freedom in my life. And, you know, ever since the Lord touched me and saved me and filled me with the spirit, uh, it's always been that way. But it's been a more deeper way after my experience in heaven i can't describe it but it's just like i tell everybody i'm just chill you know like it doesn't matter wow. what happens you know people are all focused on what's going on in the world right now and it's like you know what if you would know how powerful your god is and how 
wonderful Jesus is and how much he wants to incorporate heaven into your life. It's just receive what he has. Wowza. Wowza. You know, uh, one last question, a quick one, uh, Mike, and that is, have you ever met the family of your uh, donor here in this world? No, but we we are told to write letters to our donor family through the transplant center, and so I have written, and they have received the letter that uh, I just basically told them I'm grateful, but wow. I did not be well. I was not able to share that I had died and met their loved one. So it's my prayer that uh, someday soon I would be able to meet the the donor family. Wow. And encourage them to say, hey, your loved one was in heaven. And, and what they did as, as a gift to me, I'm alive because of that. You met your donor in heaven. Yeah. And that just is um, an incredible it, revelation. As we yeah. wrap this up, uh, Mike, um, when you came away from this experience now, and obviously you have some lung issues going on currently, and you look back on this, What do you think the Lord was telling you in terms of your experience in meeting your lung donor that you might want to communicate to our audience? Well, you know, I, like, I think I reiterated earlier is that God knows every detail of our life, every situation that's going to come into our life. It's already mapped out. He knows what's going to happen. He knows the circumstances we're going to face. And isn't it just like God? to speak to other people in our lives to confirm what we've experienced because he's a loving God. And he wants to know, he wants you to know it's going to be okay. What you, what you're going through is going to, you're going to be okay. You're going to come out the other side. And that's what I learned. Even when I was in heaven for that brief time, I learned, you know, when I was standing there waiting uh, and collecting my thoughts is that we worry about way too many things here on the earth, whether it's our finances or spouses, you know, or, or anything. Uh, and in the light of eternity, this is such a short little visit here. It may seem like long. We may, it may seem long when, if you're suffering or in pain, but God knows all about it. And he sends his angels. Mm. That's a very poignant word. And that deserves a praise the Lord, Mike, because... Yeah. Uh, our guests uh, came back from heaven oftentimes with a message for those who are living yes. today. Yes. So the, the message for those who are in Yeshua, Christ the Lord, is this. Be of good cheer yeah. because heaven is in your future. Thank That's you right. again, Mike, for uh, right. joining us today. And uh, take care. God bless. Until next time. Thank you for watching this episode of Heaven Encounters. If you'd like more information, you can go to Randy K Ministries at randyk.org. Take care and God bless.